Another aspect of security is identity. How does a user prove to an application that they are who they say they are? Traditionally, this is done with user ID and password, but for some applications, that is just not enough. We'll talk about Microsoft's identity solution in this video, along with other ways that users can prove their identity. The next requirement of the exam says uh, to know the difference between authentication and authorization. These are fairly basic concepts for security. The concept of authentication is that a user has proven who they are. So just like a bouncer is going to ask for ID, a driver's license, it has your picture on it, it has your name. Having your user ID and password is enough in most cases to prove who you are. So once user John Doe has logged in with the correct password, then we believe that this person is John Doe. The complement to that is called authorization. So once you understand that you're dealing with John Doe, what level of permissions does that person have to each aspect of your environment, right? Do they have the rights to log into this application or do they not? Do they have the rights to create resources or do they not? There's going to be different rights for different people, obviously. This concept of once you've identified that the person has been authenticated, that they have full access to your system is kind of a thing of the past. I mean, only the most simplistic systems can have all users having exactly identical access. You're going to want to differentiate between administrators and power users, people who have read-only access versus people who can make changes, etc. not only in your applications, but within your networking and IT environments. The next topic is Azure Active Directory. Now, overall, this is a huge topic, right? Understanding all the nuances of Azure AD, how to set it up, how to get that integrated into your environment uh, is a biggie. Now, Azure Active Directory, which is uh, abbreviated as Azure AD, is Microsoft's uh, identity as a service solution. So you're basically, uh, Microsoft's providing this as a service to you and they will take over the authentication aspects of your applications. So you basically have them log into the user ID and password of the user, validate that and let you go back to your application and let you know that that's okay. It is Microsoft's preferred solution. So if you do see in exams questions around identity, you should be thinking about Azure AD as being one of the, the best answers and what usually Microsoft's looking for. There's a lot to it. And we're talking about users. We're talking about being able to groups, group users into groups and create roles. There are built-in roles that you can create custom roles, assign permissions to those roles, assign permissions, uh, th those roles to groups and to users, etc. Now, Azure AD is the type of technology that can enable the concept of single sign-on. So where you have an, a user, let's say it's a corporate user, an enterprise user, he or she has their company user ID and company password, being able to use that same user ID and password in any application they need to log into is the concept of single sign-on. And the way that that's enabled is that those applications use a technology like Azure Active Directory to validate the user. So the user ID and password lives in a central location like Active Directory, and all of the other applications use that uh, to validate the user. That way, if the user ever changes their password in one location, then that's in effect in all locations. So the centralization of the identity is an important concept for single sign-on. Now, some people might be familiar with a Windows Server technology called Active Directory or AD. So when they hear Azure AD, they think, oh, it's pretty much the same thing. You're probably taking a version of Microsoft Active Directory and installing it within Microsoft Azure. And that's not entirely true. Azure Active Directory is a unique piece of software specifically written for Azure. There is a synchronization that can happen. So in the single sign-on case we were just talking about, if you have corporate users that are registered within a corporate Active Directory, you can synchronize that to the Azure Active Directory service, and those users and passwords would be recognized within Azure AD. And if a user changes their password or a new user gets created, within so many minutes that gets synchronized into the cloud as well. So there is a synchronization process to keep your on-premises Active Directory synchronized with your Microsoft Azure Active Directory. They are different. They have different capabilities. Some things, there's a lot of things that Active Directory can do that Azure AD can't. Azure AD is really designed specifically for internet technologies and web protocols. Uh, there's a lot of things that 
um, like in corporate AD, there's a technology called LDAP, which is a light directory protocol. LDAP is not supported in Azure AD as an example. So there are uh, technologies that are supported within a corporate network that would not be supported on the internet uh, because of TCP and HTTP and those types of protocols. We should talk about multi-factor authentication. Now, multi-factor authentication is a feature of Azure Active Directory. And optionally, you can enable this so that users are forced to have another piece of identifier in order for them to log in. Now, the reason it's called multi-factor authentication is because when you have a user ID and password, those are two factors, right? So your user ID is a factor. So knowing a person's user ID is some proof that you that you are them, but it's not a very strong proof because a lot of times uh, people can just guess it, your first initial and your last name or your email address. So that's why we don't ever use username as a sole factor to prove who you are. Typically we require a password, which is the second factor. Password you hopefully is hard to guess. You want your passwords to be reasonably complex and not just one, two, three, four, five. And hopefully it's unique across the internet and across your uh, environment. You don't want to be reusing passwords in your email provider, your bank, and all of your other places. That's pretty straightforward security advice. So the password is unique and no one else in the world has the same password as you. That's a pretty, pretty safe password. But the multi-factor comes in when we're talking about this third factor. And the third factor in the case of MFA is typically that you have a phone, you have a, a mobile phone, and we can connect to you on your mobile phone. And the fact that you have it proves that it's you. Presumably, if somebody in a, I'm going to say in a far away country, has your user ID and has your password, they can log into the system sometimes. There are ways of protecting against that, but they don't have your phone. And so if, a, if Azure was to send you a text message, they're not going to receive it. And so that third factor is a, is a separate thing other than the internet. There could be a, a text message, which is called SMS. There could be applications. Microsoft has an, an authenticator app. Google has an authenticator app. Other companies provide it as well. Or even just a voice phone call where you get a phone call to your phone. You pick it up and it says, please use the number 3739 to log into the site. So there are different ways of turning on what's called multi-factor authentication. It is con widely considered to be a much stronger form of security to prove authentication. So if you have your user ID and password, you can say you're at one level of protection. But if you can turn on multi-factor authentication, that is a order of magnitude more secure um, because really somebody in a far away from you is not going to have access to your phone. Now, there are spoofing technologies that your SIM card can get copied and things like that. But that's a fairly sophisticated attack. And they would you're, you're talking about someone who's really targeting you, who's had access to your phone to copy your SIM card. Um, or swapped out your SIM card, that's a pretty sophisticated attack and, and MFA may not protect you from something like that. But in 99.999999% of cases, this multi-factor is going to thwart any kind of hackers into your account. 